Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk about Flint, Michigan. We've received so many questions and requests for a video. A lot of people are asking, how did the scientists fail to find a problem with lead in the water? Well, we've done some digging and we found that there was no failure of science. In fact, no less than four teams of scientists had found a problem with corrosions and lead in the water. It was the Department of Environmental Quality in Michigan who blocked those scientists and caused the Flint water crisis. Here's what really happened. Back in 2011, when city officials were considering using the Flint River for its water supply, scientists found that the water was corrosive. It contained high levels of chloride, known to eat away at metals. How did the chloride get there? Well, it wasn't necessarily from manufacturing or illegal runoff, as you might think. It was from salt. Table salt has the chemical structure sodium chloride. When salt dissolves in water, the negative chloride ions are separated from positive metal ions. The free chloride ions make the water corrosive and cause the pipes to leach metal into the water, particularly lead from lead pipes. So how did the salt get into the river in the first place? Simple. The people of Flint live in Michigan, where there's lots of snow, and they were using excessive amounts of salt to de-ice the roads. The salty water ran into the Flint River and was then pumped back into their pipes. Now, everyone knows that salt runoff is a problem for rivers in snowy areas, and everyone knew that the water in the Flint River had a much higher level of chloride than the water they had been getting from the Great Lakes. Back in 2011, researchers advised Flint city officials that in order for the water to be drinkable, they would need to add an anti-corrosive agent. Up until now, Flint had been getting its water from nearby Detroit, and Detroit was using phosphates to prevent the problem in their own pipes. No problem, problem solved. But Flint ignored those scientists and chose not to add the anti-corrosive agent to the water because it would cost $100 a day. In April 2014, the town of Flint switched from using Detroit water to Flint River water. Almost immediately, the harsher waters caused Flint's pipes to release iron that made the water brown, as we've seen in photos of people holding brown water. Now, iron is unpleasant to look at, but it's not that dangerous. By October 2014, General Motors had noticed that the water corroded their car parts and had stopped using it. In February 2015, officials tested the home of Leanne Walters and discovered her water had lead levels of 104 parts per billion. Now, there's no safe level of lead, but the threshold is considered to be 15 parts per billion. So a reading of 104 parts per billion was extremely worrying. The city retested her water later that month and found an even higher number of 397 parts per billion, more than 25 times higher than the recommended threshold. According to the EPA's rules, if lead reaches a level of 15 parts per billion in water, the source of the problem must be identified and corrected. The EPA asked Flint what it was doing to prevent lead from leaching into the drinking water from pipes. Was Flint using phosphates as recommended? The Michigan Department of Environmental Quality responded to say that yes, Flint had an anti-corrosion program. What they didn't admit was that phosphates were not part of that program, essentially lying to the EPA. They told the public of Flint that Leanne's house was an anomaly, but it wasn't. Given the information from General Motors and from Leanne Walters, Michigan Department of Environmental Quality should have and could have begun acting at this point, but it didn't. Instead, it decided to monitor the lead levels. Unsurprisingly, their monitoring found that lead levels were rising, but rather than act, the Department of Environmental Quality lied, telling the public that tests showed the water was safe. Leanne Walters had her four-year-old son tested for lead poisoning and found a blood lead level of 6.5 micrograms per deciliter, meaning that her son was officially lead poisoned. Now, you probably know lead is not a good thing to have in your body, but its effects are particularly damaging for children. Lead mimics the actions of calcium and interacts with proteins, attacking a child's developing brain and causing a range of neurological and learning disabilities. Frightened for her children and increasingly desperate, Ms. Walters started her own independent research, tracking down city reports to prove that Flint was not using any anti-corrosion treatment. She also tracked down a water expert, Miguel del Toro, 
who worked at the EPA in Chicago, and she informed him of what was happening in Flint. Del Toro warned Ms. Walters that the testing done by the city was purposely deceptive. Flint city representatives had told Ms. Walters to pre-flush the water mains by running her water on full for 15 minutes. This clears out much of the lead and sedentary water that's left sitting in the pipes, which means the lead reading will be much lower. Essentially, the city of Flint was trying to fudge the numbers. Del Toro connected Ms. Walters with Mark Edwards, an expert on water quality at Virginia Tech, to have her water independently tested. By June 2015, Del Toro had composed a preliminary report on the lead crisis in Flint, which was leaked to journalists. This was the first time any official had publicly implied that there could be a serious lead problem with Flint's water. But because the report wasn't finalised, the EPA refused to talk about it with the media. In the report, Del Toro raised serious red flags about the lack of corrosion control treatment and also mentioned the practice of pre-flushing before testing, saying there was significant underestimation of lead levels in the drinking water. Again, the Department of Environmental Quality denied the problem and called Del Toro a rogue employee, dismissing his findings. After the reports hit the airwaves, Linda Dykenna from Michigan's Department of Health and Human Services reached out to the Department of Environmental Quality for an update on Flint. The Department of Environmental Quality lied and said they had not seen a change in compliance with the lead rule since switching to the Flint River source. Suspicious, the Department of Health and Human Services ran its own data and found that yes, there had been an increase in the number of children with lead poisoning, but they didn't do anything with that information and the report was never released. Meanwhile, Mark Edwards and the volunteer research team from Virginia Tech retested the Walters home and found that the lead levels in the water had skyrocketed to 13,200 parts per billion, more than twice the amount at which the EPA classifies water as hazardous waste. But the problem wasn't isolated. The researchers found that at least a quarter of the households they tested had levels of lead above the threshold of 15 parts per billion. Edwards later commented, the extent to which they went to cover this up exposes a new level of arrogance and uncaring that I have never encountered. By August 2015, the EPA had officially asked Flint to start using anti-corrosion treatment in its water. Flint refused, insisting they were not required to by law. By September 2015, Edwards and his team from Virginia Tech went public with their findings and announced that the Flint River's high chloride levels were causing pipes to corrode and leach lead. Again, the State Department of Environmental Quality told the public there was nothing to worry about. It claimed it had tested the water at every home with lead pipes. But it was later discovered that the city had no idea which homes had lead pipes because the data on the city's water lines was stored on 45,000 index cards some over a hundred years old. That same month, Dr. Hannah Atisha, director of pediatric residency programs at the medical center in Flint, announced that lead poisoning in young children had surged since the city switched its water supply. Again, the Department of Environmental Quality claimed that her data was wrong and accused Dr. Hannah Atisha of playing politics. It wasn't until October 19 that Dan Wyant, director of the State Department of Environmental Quality, admitted that his department had made a mistake. By November, the residents of Flint had filed a class action lawsuit. And by December, the Michigan governor's office released its findings on the Flint water crisis and in a scathing task force report, blamed Wyant and the Department of Environmental Quality for the problem. Wyant resigned on December 29, 2015. Now, if all of this hasn't made you mad yet, the Flint Water Study has released emails from Michigan's Department of Health and Human Services and Department of Environmental Quality revealing that both state agencies purposely refused to release data to scientific researchers and were instead working full time to attack the idea that there was any problem with lead poisoning in Flint. Links to all of that information are in the description. But no joke, this is the first email released from his office and as you can see, the whole email has been redacted, so not much hope of transparency there. As of January 2016, an estimated 6,000 to 12,000 children have been exposed to lead poisoning. The neurological impacts for these children are unknown, but estimates put the cost of their medical treatment at 100 million over the next 10 years. 
If you'd like to do something to make sure that what happened in Flint never happens again, Phil Phelps, a Democratic member of Michigan's House of Representatives, announced that he's about to release a bill to make it a felony for state officials to intentionally manipulate or falsify information in official reports, punishable up to five years in prison, and a $5,000 fine. You can tweet your support for that bill to Michigan's House Democrats at MI House Dems or to Michigan's House Republicans at MI House GOP.